Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about c -Shop and .NET and how your opinion about the language and the framework might be outdated, especially if you haven't really looked at it in the past four to five years. Now, I was browsing YouTube and I saw one of those videos that sounded like, should you learn c -Shop in 2021? And while I was watching that, it was very clear to me that this person didn't know what they were talking about. They were giving like old outdated information about the language and the framework comparing it to Java and how Java is significantly better and faster and whatnot, and that you should learn that over c -Shop. So I dived into Quora and I searched a little bit and I found a few interesting answers on similar questions that are so outdated. And I want to use this platform to address those. This is not a comparison between c -Shop and Java or any other language. Other languages can do whatever they want. I only want to address c -Shop itself and .NET. And yes, some of the answers just it against Java because of how similar in principle the languages are. And let's be honest, C Sharp was made by Microsoft to be their own Java and maybe give you my take on how things are nowadays. If you like the lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's go to the first one here. And this one is why is C Sharp so much better than Java yet not as popular? Now, is this statement true? I don't know. And also I don't care. What I do care is about the first upvoted answer, which is from 2017, by the way. Um, and one of the things is C Sharp costs money and you're tied into Windows. That's 2017. No, you are not tied into Windows. .NET and C Sharp are cross-platform. They have been since April of 2016. Clearly this person, and you can see it from what they're saying here, experience in C, C++, Java and Go, they have no idea what they're talking about. And this is the most upvoted answer with 65,000 views. This is ridiculous. C Sharp is cross-platform. It is free. You don't have to pay anyone. It runs anywhere from your Raspberry Pis to a Windows server if you want to, or Linux or Mac. And many people that I know develop on Linux and Mac, and they have a lot of free open source frameworks as well. You can do anything you want. Now, some of the best ones are made by Microsoft, but those are still Free. Let's go to the next one. And this one is a blog saying Java vs Python vs .NET, which one is the best? Let's go to the pros and cons for .NET. And the pros are it supports great third party languages. Yes. Stable code. Yes. Great community of experts. Indeed. And then the platform is highly productive. True. You can do tons of things, like from games to applications to Windows apps to like anything you can do with .NET. The cons, it often faces some issues related to stability for new releases. It does not. It, it just doesn't. It's being scrutinized before release to a ridiculous degree. And then limited object relational support. I'm assuming they're talking about ORMs, like Entity Framework is just so good. So I really don't understand this con and I'm not really going to dive into the other ones because again, I'm not comparing here. So the next one is interesting. It says, is Java and the JVM falling behind a C Sharp, F Sharp? Uh, and .NET with the release of .NET 5, and that was a year ago at this point. And the answer from the first question is yes, it was already far behind and .NET pushed it even further. Okay, let's not really address that. Someone is defending Java and it's way ahead. But what I want to talk about is the sentiment behind this comment, the fact that Java was already behind. Let's see what Java is adding from Java 8 to Java 17. So if we go to the features and we go to like pattern matching for Switch, this is a lift and shift one for one. Actually, it's a bit clankier because it has a case here. Uh, C Sharp doesn't have it, but it's very much exactly how you do pattern matching for Switch in C Sharp. Added a few versions ago, and this is still in preview in Java. Or you have the sealed classes, which you don't allow anyone to inherit from that class. C Sharp had it since forever. It's been in preview for two versions and GA now. Record type, we added that a version ago. Like pattern matching for instance off to say, if is instance of a string, C Sharp says X is string. All these features that effectively, yeah, switch expressions, same thing. C Sharp had it for a while and actually implementations look one for one. So at this point, making arguments about language design doesn't make sense. And then, you know, the other one is C Sharp better than Java in 2019. And the first one, 3.7 thousand views. And the commenter says Java is both language and runtime and environment is better. No, Java isn't a runtime. The JVM is the runtime. Java is the language and many things can compile to bytecode, which is what 
the JVM will run, similar to Groovy or Kotlin or whatever. Anyway, and there is no second class citizen version of Java on different platforms as it happens in .NET. I'm assuming they're referring to Mono. This is 2019. By that time we had .NET 3.1, I think. And that was like fully cross-platform. You can run it anywhere. And in fact, it might even perform faster in Linux. So I don't know what they're on about. And then Java's compilation and optimization happens at runtime, not before, as with .NET and C Sharp. No, Java, similar to .NET, will compile to bytecode or intermediate language code for .NET. And that will be the first stage of compilation. And then there's a JIT compiler that happens in runtime for both the JVM and the CLR, our own version of the VM, which will also optimize that even further. So the argument programmer for 40 years isn't really strong. Please don't leave comments like this if you are not proficient in both languages. And there's other comments as well saying that .NET is not cross-platform or c -sharp is not cross-platform. That's not true. The ASP.NET Core framework, as you can see, fully cross-platform here. Anything you want can be found here. Same with the runtime. You can find it here. It's fully cross-platform. And in fact, if you want to very easily and quickly search for some source code, you just go at source dot 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 net. That's a stupid name. Anyway, and you can search like let's say password hasher to see how dot net is doing password hashing by default. And you can see all the code here. It's all open source. You can go to the file as well. If you just click on that, it takes you to like, it's so great. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, in Stack Overflow's 2021 survey, ASP.NET Core came second as the most loved framework, a little bit under Svelte, and Svelte had only 1,000 responders. So really, it was very high, higher than React, higher than Express, higher than Spring. So clearly, people like this. And what I want to do is I want to go to the tech-empowered benchmarks, which are public benchmarks, third party. It's not by Microsoft. They benchmark a bunch of different tech from Rust to C++ to Java to C Sharp to everything. And we can see the plain text um, web server responses and how many requests per second this thing can do. And as you can see, we have 7 million here. It's the second most performing under Pico V. I don't know anyone using Pico V or the V language. So that's a micro framework. Ignore it. As you can see, it performs faster than anything else, faster than Java, C++, Rust, anything. Of course, this is just plain text, so it's just effectively testing the web server. But if you go to other examples, like let's say JSON serialization, and you search for ASP core, it's still pretty high, because if you search for something like Node.js, that's 45,000 requests per second, while ASP core, if we go all the way up, it's 160 almost. And then if you go to the single query test as well, you can see that ASP core is still very, very high. And if we go to compare that with something like Spring with WebFlux, that's 18,000 requests per second. And if we go with raw Spring, that's 14. It's very performant, very efficient, very fast. This isn't to say that you should use C Sharp and .NET. This is to say that's how things are in 2021. Please update your opinion about the language. You don't have to use it, but at least when it comes time to talk about it, understand what the state of the language and the frameworks are. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.